Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on installing Windows XP. We're going to go through a full install of Windows XP because CompTIA said for the A plus 22701 section 3.3 exam that you need to know how to explain the process and the steps to install and configure the Windows operating system. And Windows XP is the OS that we're going to do in this particular module. Now, before you install Windows XP, you have to think about what you want to be able to do prior to actually beginning the installation process. This is the same list that we did in our planning video. So if you don't recall the details of these particular steps of the installation, go back to that video and make sure you understand before you even put in the CD or the DVD to perform the installation that you have done all of these things. The backup is incredibly important. Minimum requirements will certainly come into play during the installation. Checking the hardware compatibility is going to be a requirement because your operating system is not going to install unless your hardware is going to be able to support it. You want to be able to plan the file system type you're going to use, FAT or NTFS generally, and the installation method. And in the case of this install, we're going to plug in our CD or our DVD and install directly from there. As a refresher, Windows XP Home and Professional have these minimum and recommended requirements. We need at least 233 megahertz and 64 meg of RAM. And in all cases, 1.5 gigabytes of hard drive space with a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM drive to be able to read the installation media, at least an 800 by 600 SVGA screen for our video, and of course, have a mouse and a keyboard available as well. If you're running XP Media Center, your minimum requirements are a little bit higher. You need at least 1.6 gigahertz processor and 256 megabytes of RAM with 60 gig of hard drive space. And of course, the reason it's so much larger is because that type of full motion video being able to capture television television signals, save them on a hard drive. You need a lot more resources, a lot more processor speed, and a lot more disk space. Notice also we're going to need at least VGA resolution, 1024 by 768, and a mouse and keyboard, although the maximum settings incredibly high. You could really have a very, very powerful system running Windows XP Media Center and really take advantage of all of that hardware. Here's our Sun Virtual Box we're going to use to install Windows XP on this computer. I've configured this with 128 meg of base memory, so not just the minimum requirements, but really the recommended requirements for the amount of RAM in my system. And I've set up a 4 gig blank drive. So I've got well above the 1.5 gigabytes of hard drive space. That'll make sure that we're able to install it. And I want to do some other things with that operating system later. Now, instead of installing this from a physical CD or DVD, I've taken my Windows XP CD, and I've created an image from that. If you go back and look at our video on how to use a virtual machine, I talk about the software like ImageBurn that you could use to create that with. This is going to speed up the access to that ISO file. Plus, it means I don't necessarily have to keep track of where my CD or my DVD might be. Well, all we have to do to really get this machine running is to click the Start button. So let's get it up and running. And Windows XP boots up. It says press a key to boot from the CD, and that's exactly what I would like to do because this is the very first time that I've run this software on this computer system. It's going to go first through this process of doing the basic Windows setup here. And we've got some options as this loads. You may have seen it go by to press a couple of function keys if you need to load special hard drive drivers. If you're running a SCSI drive, that's really, really useful. And there's also a section to run the automated recovery. And we're going to talk about recovering an operating system in the 702 videos. But in this particular case, we're just going to let it continue to run. The first thing that the Windows XP installation process does is load a bunch of files that it will need to at least get through the setup. And these are driver files for video, for your mouse, for your keyboard, for well-known controllers, hard drive controllers. So it's able to access the hard drives and able to access the CD-ROM and your keyboard and the video so that at least the basic installation program can run properly. The first screen we get is Welcome to Setup. This portion of the Setup program prepares Microsoft Windows XP to run on your computer. To set up Windows XP now, press Enter. To repair an installation, press R. Or to quit without installing XP, press F3. Well, we'd like to set up XP, so I will hit Enter. It's going to look at my hard drive and then give me the end user license agreement. You want to page down and read through the end user license agreement. If you agree with everything here, you would press F8 to agree. Escape if you do not agree. And I like that, so we're going to press F8. 
on my fresh drive, Windows XP says, this is the disk space that you have. You have a four gig disk. It's unpartitioned. To set up Windows XP on the selected item, press Enter. To create a partition in the unpartitioned space, press C. If I just want to use part of the drive for Windows or delete a partition, press D. Well, I want to just set up Windows XP and use all four gig of this partition. So I'm going to hit Enter. Now it says, what partition, what format the partition do you want to have? What disk system do you want to have running? Do you want NTFS? file allocation table? And do you want to do a quick or a full formatting of that? Well, in our case, I want to use NTFS. I want to use quick so we can quickly get through with this. If this is a brand new disk for you, you've never used this disk before, you aren't quite certain if it's going to run properly, you may want to go through the full formatting down here of NTFS or FAT just to make sure that it goes through every single bit of that and it formats properly. In our case, this is a virtual disk. I'm pretty comfortable with what we have here. So I'm going to hit Enter. That format process went pretty quick. So now we're going to have set up examine the disks that we have here. It's going to copy a bunch of files down that it's then going to use to really do the full installation. So you see it copying files. It's copying really fast now because it's going right from that ISO file. Normally, when you're running from a CD or a DVD, this process takes a little bit longer to have happen. So once it gets everything copied to the hard drive, it will reboot the computer and will be in what you would be more accustomed to seeing, which is more of the graphical mode of the setup program. Now that all the files have been copied over, Windows XP Professional Setup says, if there's a floppy disk, take it out. To restart your computer, press Enter. Or it's going to wait 15 seconds and do it myself. We'll speed this along. I'll hit the Enter key, and we'll have this now restart Sun Virtual Box. This is also going to come up, notice, and say, press a key to boot from the CD. I don't want to boot from the CD. I've gotten everything copied down to that new partition now. I want it to boot in its normal partition. And indeed, it starts up Windows XP Professional. This is the type of graphical front end we're accustomed to seeing when Windows starts up.